the UK strongly condemns the Houthis' arbitrary detention of United Nations personnel and staff who work for, or previously worked for, international and national non-governmental organizations and diplomatic missions. Colleagues, the time has come for Council action to ensure compliance with the arms embargo and put a stop to the unprecedented violations of UN sanctions. Unfortunately, the Council was unable to send a clear message regarding the catastrophic situation around UNRWA in Gaza, where the number of the dead humanitarian personnel is nearly 200. Of course, the situation around the detained is very serious, but it is of principled importance to avoid double standards in the consideration of such matters. Thank you, President. And I thank Special Envoy Grunberg and Director Wasonu for your briefings, sobering as they are. I'm going to focus on three points. First, the UK strongly condemns the Houthis' arbitrary detention of United Nations personnel and staff who work for, or previously worked for, international and national non-governmental organizations and diplomatic missions. We extend our sympathy to them and their families at this very difficult time. We call on the Houthis to immediately and unconditionally release them. The safety and security of all humanitarian workers, UN personnel, and current and former diplomatic staff is vital. Second, we share Director Wasornu's concern at the dire humanitarian and economic situation in Yemen. We know 18.2 million people are in need of humanitarian assistance. Over half of them are children. 17.6 million people, over half the population, remain food insecure, and 80% of the population live below the poverty line. Only 50% of hospitals across the country are partially or fully functioning. It is critical that parties take steps to address this, including through facilitating unfettered access for aid workers to provide essential support to those in need. Additionally, we call on the parties involved to engage in dialogue, de-escalate, and resolve the ongoing banking dispute as a matter of urgency, and safeguard the well-being of ordinary Yemenis. The UK has committed to spend over $175 million this year to help alleviate the suffering of the most vulnerable, and we urge colleagues in the international community to do what they can to scale up assistance. Thirdly, we call on the Houthis to cease their illegal and unjustified attacks on maritime shipping through the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden, including recent attacks on the MV Tutor, the MV Nordenay, and the MSC Tavish. As a council, we have been unequivocally clear in our statements and in our adoption of Security Council Resolution 2722 that we condemn the Houthi attacks. These dangerous and reckless acts must end. To conclude, President, we reiterate our unwavering support of the Special Envoy's efforts to secure an inclusive and sustainable peace in Yemen. We continue to urge all parties to de-escalate tensions and preserve space for negotiations under the UN roadmap. Thank you. Mr. President, we are grateful to the Special Envoy of the Secretary General for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, and the Director of uh, OCHA, Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs, Madam Bosunu, for the reports on the political and humanitarian situation in that country. The situation within and around Yemen does not lend itself to peace talks, and the reason behind this is instability in the region, first and foremost, the ongoing escalation in Gaza. Such a large-scale crisis hotspot in the neighborhood cannot 
but impact processes underway in Yemen. Also significantly thwarting peace efforts is the ongoing militarization of the Red Sea and the Yemeni waters. We view as unacceptable attacks on civilian vessels navigating in the Red Sea. We call for an immediate end to the strikes against commercial vessels and any other actions which prevent maritime navigation. We demand the release of the crew of the Galaxy Leader. At the same time, we condemn the strikes by the U.S. and U.K.-led coalition targeting the, ter the territory, the sovereign territory of Yemen. This aggression is being perpetrated in violation of the U.N. Charter. It is pointless insofar as it cannot stop attacks in the Red Sea. Furthermore, as with other countries of the Middle East and North Africa, these reckless instances of use of force by NATO countries leave behind them a blood-stained uh, 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 a stain of blood in the form of countless civilian casualties and devastation of civilian infrastructure. These kinds of illegitimate military interventions cannot be justified cannot be justified either by invoking resolution 2722 nor by referring to the right to self defense pursuant to article 51 of the UN charter on the 31st of May alone as a result of a missile strike on the Yemeni province of Hodeida as has been reported 16 people died and another 55 35 corrects the speaker were wounded these kinds of actions not only fail to help normalize the situation in the waters of the Red Sea, on the contrary, they continue to further the spiral of violence. We call upon Western delegations to acknowledge the fact that in order to address the situation within Yemen and in neighboring waters, what is necessary are comprehensive political diplomatic efforts, not what is customary for the West, their aggressive strikes. First and foremost, there is a need to expeditiously bring about an end to the violence in the Gaza Strip. President, we support the efforts of the Special Envoy, Mr. Grunberg. We believe that uh, there is one shouldn't wait for the situation in the Red Sea to change. There is a need to step up work with the parties to the Yemeni conflict, seeking to expeditiously transition to implementation of the existing roadmap and to turn to implementation of a full-fledged intra-Yemeni normalization process. The situation on the ground where, where large-scale military hostilities have been halted for some time now grants an opportunity to step up reconciliation efforts. There is a, a, a need for urgent action to address the deteriorating humanitarian situation. There is nearly, nearly half of the country's population is in need of humanitarian assistance. The Yemeni people need to have unfettered access to food, medicines, and other basic necessities in all the territory of Yemen on a non-discriminatory basis. Any limitations on the or restrictions on the, lim on the delivery of, uh, of humanitarian assistance and any obstacles to the work of humanitarian workers are unacceptable. We see the stark underfinancing of specialized humanitarian programs. In order to address this situation, there is a need to bring in the efforts of all international stakeholders. President, the Russian Federation, like other delegations, has been learned with alarm about the recent detention in Yemen of 13 UN staff who, during the course of their work, there is a need to get to the bottom of the circumstances behind what transpired before flinging accusations against any party. We repeatedly heard from the representatives of some states that there is a need to provide time for quiet diplomacy when at the matter is related to grave allegations against uh, uh, staff of UN agencies, let us recall that in the past some of the members of the Security Council present here present refused to condemn the beating and detention of a UN mission in Kosovo's uh, per, uh, staff uh, um, uh, staff member, Mr. Krasnashokov. Unfortunately, the Council was unable to send a clear message regarding the catastrophic situation around UNRWA in Gaza, where the number of the dead humanitarian personnel is nearly 200. 
Of course, the situation around the detained is very serious, but it is of principled importance to avoid double standards in the consideration of such matters. All humanitarian workers hired by the United Nations need to be, uh, need to be uh, protected to an equal extent. For our part, we intend to continue to deliver every possible form of assistance to Mr. Hunberg in clarifying the circumstances and gaining access to UN personnel. All illegitimately, illegitimately detained UN personnel need to be released. Mr. President, we welcome the operations of the UN mission in Hodeida. Anoha to implement the Stockholm Agreement on the Yemeni ports of Hodeida, Salif, and Ras Issa. We consistently advocate de-escalation in Hodeida and maintenance of the civilian nature of the operations of its ports. We call on the parties to constructively cooperate with Anmoha. And we stand ready to continue to deliver its uh, General Michael Berry, the head of this uh, body, every possible assistance in its work. And we support the forthcoming extension of the mandate of the mission to be carried out in July. The Russian Federation continues to maintain close contacts with all Yemeni protagonists and uh, parties engaged in the conflict, who are, uh, the, and this is geared towards prompting them to exercise restraint, maintain a constructive approach, and a willingness to engage in compromise. We believe there is no alternative to a political solution. And at the same time, we continue to believe that the Security Council should closely study the prospects for the resumption of the international legal basis for a Yemeni settlement in order to ensure that this reflect realities on the ground. Thank you. Mr. President, the United States is deeply disturbed by reports that Houthi rebels detained at least 50 Yemeni employees of UN agencies, member state diplomatic missions, private companies, international organizations, and non-governmental organizations. These detentions include 13 UN employees. The humanitarian situation in Yemen remains difficult, and Yemenis need the support of the international community now more than ever. The detention of UN and NGO staff directly and negatively affects the ability for organizations to provide humanitarian aid. These actions further call into question the Houthis' commitment to doing what is in the best interests of the Yemeni people. Instead, it shows their focus on their own ideological goals. We condemn these detentions, and we echo Secretary General Guterres' strong and clear call for the Houthis to release these detainees immediately. We are disappointed that this Council could not reach consensus in echoing the Secretary General's call. We also strongly condemn Houthi efforts to spread disinformation regarding the role of detained U.S. current and former local staff through televised, forced, and phony so-called confessions. Yet again, the Houthis are seeking to use disinformation to distract from their failures to meet the needs of the Yemeni people. The simple fact is that the Houthis have held these individuals without justification for more than two and a half years. Two and a half years. Their detention, alongside that of the UN staff, is an affront to international norms. They should all be released immediately. Despite clear warnings and unified condemnation from countries around the world, the Houthis also have continued their reckless attacks in the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and surrounding waterways with growing negative implications for peace and security, as well as global trade. The Houthis must abide by Resolution 2722 and immediately cease their attacks on commercial and merchant vessels. Doing so would enable the unimpeded delivery of food and supplies into ports in Yemen, as well as to Sudan and other countries with populations in desperate need. Failing that, the Council must remain seized with this issue and must extend the requirement for continued reporting by the Secretary General under Resolution 2722 to ensure that it has accurate and timely information to inform its deliberations over this clear threat to navigational rights and freedoms, as well as peace and security. Colleagues, we call your attention to the fact that numerous documented vessels have docked at Houthi-controlled ports without 
UNVIM inspection since October 2023. These failures to submit to UNVIM inspection highlight the need for member states to invest in UNVIM and ensure that essential goods and not weapons supporting the Houthis' reckless campaign are reaching Yemen. We look forward to conversations with stakeholders about how we can strengthen UNVIM's mandate and ensure its financial security moving forward. Its work is vital and must be supported. Further, reports published by news agencies directly affiliated with Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps are now publicly and openly touting that Iran has been supplying anti-ship ballistic missiles to the Houthis. These announcements further validate what we have long said about Iran's provision of advanced weapons to the Houthis in violation of Security Council resolutions. Iran continues to directly support and enable Houthi attacks in the Red Sea region, and its continued and brazen violations of the arms embargo should not be overlooked by this Council. Iran should not be permitted to hide behind the Houthis. It must comply with the Council's resolutions and cease its provision of weapons. Colleagues, the time has come for Council action to ensure compliance with the arms embargo and put a stop to the unprecedented violations of UN sanctions. These transgressions make abundantly clear that the Houthis are the primary actor jeopardizing a political resolution between the Yemeni parties. As such, we should view their recent unilateral release of detainees with skepticism and more indicative of posturing to improve their position in advance of potential UN-led negotiations, which should not proceed absent a halt to maritime attacks. We continue to believe the UN's inclusive roadmap remains a better path, one that could hopefully lead to a durable end to the conflict that addresses Yemeni, Yemeni calls for justice, accountability, and redress for human rights abuses and violations by all parties in Yemen. Thank you, Mr. President.